ladies and gentlemen, welcome to Stardom Review. I am your co-host, Andre C. And right over here, she's making her way back. She's returned. She's my savior, my favorite, my, my the love of my podcasting life. It's the <laughs> it's it's our taco princess herself. It's the Melball. How you doing? I am doing great, Andre. I actually had an uneventful drive to and from Canmore. That That's doesn't a, happen. That's not possible with you. I know, but it happened. The cat didn't cry too much um, in the car. I don't know what signal he was sending out to the national park when we tried hiking with him, but uh, he wasn't too happy there. But man, much needed vacation to get away for a few days, go see my parents, go hiking. The dog freaking Koji loved it. Did not like the lakes. Not a swimmer. <laughs> How are you doing, Andre? I am doing pretty good. Been pretty busy. Back to work this week. Uh, just finished my work week, and we're going. And now I'm going into a nice week, busy ass weekend of a, of, oh gosh, uh, of the Edmonton Expo. I'm going to be there Friday, Saturday, and Sunday. I'm going all three days. Melba will be joining me on Saturday, and I'm going to quickly bring it up since we're talking about it right now. We're going to be there uh, doing our panel. I'm going to turn the ticker off because nice. no, I don't know how to turn it off. No. Uh -oh. Ah, there we go. Hide. There it is. Intro to Japanese Wrestling, September 16th at 3 p.m. in the anime room. Myself, Melba, will be on stage. We'll be talking about Japanese professional wrestling with a focus on New Japan and stardom. Um, because that's what we know best. Uh, well, we're going to highlight some a couple things out of other companies. Nothing huge out of those. But, you know, all the fun stuff. But, yeah, we're going to be talking about this. So, if you are in the Edmonton area um, on... Saturday, September 16th at 3 p.m. Come to the anime room. Come hang out. Say hello. If you're watching the show and you're in, you're in the air and you can make it out, come tell us that you watch the show because we would love to meet you if you're going to be in town. We would love that. We really, really Absolutely. would. Absolutely. going to be so fun. Oh, heck yeah. I am so, so excited. excited for that show. Mm -hmm. But we are here to talk some stardom. Before we get into that, I want to thank all of you for joining us here on Andre and Melba Wrestling Talk or maybe on Backbreaker Video. Uh Thank you so much. If you could please, I, we appreciate everything you guys are doing. So please subscribe to the channel, uh, like the videos, comment down below. Because I, like, I think our favorite thing is commenting all the comments mm -hmm. you guys put in, talk, and just getting to respond to you guys and talk about what we've been talking about. We love it. We absolutely do. Mm -hmm. uh, so please uh, keep dropping your comments there, and don't forget to hit no hit the notification bell so you be alerted every time we drop. <clears throat> drop. What are we? What are we dropping? Sorry, I don't know what, don't know what we're dropping. Oh, a new video. Ding dong. Hello. <laughs> <laughs> Shout out to Bailey. <laughs> oh, man. Yeah, but we are, but yeah, I want to, we can't, I can't tell you how much we appreciate all of your guys' great support because we probably still do it, even if you didn't, because we're crazy and we talk, we, we don't mind talking on the internet to nobody because we did it. That's what we were doing <laughs> in the beginning. But we appreciate all of you for uh, listening to us in. Mm -hmm. giving us your time so thank you so very very much absolutely so we're gonna get into it we're gonna talk some stardom five star it is sorry it is the stardom five star special in hiroshima yes. we're gonna and it kicks off with a pre-show match that i didn't watch because i am bad at my i am bad at my job as i've been saying in the last few episodes I'm bad at my job because I kept flipping <laughs> everything in the last episode. They didn't have Mel here to keep me grounded and play off of just me talking <laughs> for so long. So keep you on the rails. So we have a pre show six woman tag match. It's Ami Saray, Thekla, and Yuna Mizumori taking on Queen Quest, Azumi, Lady C, and Miyu Amasaki. Mel Ball, take her away. This is this was this was an interesting opener. Um, you had the the cohesiveness of the Queen's Quest ladies where they were just Performing so fluidly, so smoothly, especially Azmi. I mean, high speed girl, just absolutely incredible. Her and Thecla had an amazing start at the beginning there, which I did not not expect. Um, these two took it away and had so much fun. Um, Yuna and, and Miyu Amasaki also having a lot of fun in ring there. Um, I really like the personality that Yuna is kind of gaining with her association with the Cosmic Angels. She's becoming very playful while still being fairly dominant in her own right with 
and me are just working so hard to be that like serious little girl within Queen's Quest. I absolutely love how her character is developing. Um, Almy and Lady were having a very tremendous uh, face out through all this with the chops going back and forth, both of them doing the machine gun shops. Almy's putting a bit of a, a new look also. She's got a little bit of like, looks like orange, orange highlights in her hair. Kind of looks like fire. I kind of like it. Kind of digging that. Um, but I, I couldn't actually remember what it was that Almy hit her with, but she hit Lady C with this kind of like, I want to say it was almost like a blue thunder bomb looking thing. Yeah, she does with Thunder Bomb is one of her. Okay, good. Because, yeah. like, you know me with move names. <laughs> Level Lady C with that. And that was how she got the uh, the pin on this one. Uh, interesting to see the, the team mismatch getting the win over the team more established. Well, again, it's an established team, but you have a former goddess champion. Uh, the current artist champion there on team mismatch. So, again, you have. Like mm -hmm. two, I, 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 like don't get me wrong. Izumi is well established. She's a former mm -hmm. high school champion. All the, but you, I look at at Thakla and Ami as more as like. Well, Izumi's been around forever because she she started young. Um, yeah. I, I think that Thakla and Ami are both in higher positions. Per just looking like yeah. after after later tonight, I think Izumi's ascending. Mm -hmm with what they're looking to do with her. But yeah, it's, I think right at this point on the show. Yeah. Those two are the higher position players. I agree. I agree. Yeah. It's just, it's with the factions and stuff, you would think that the, the, they would have a little bit more, but again, as I said, their, their fluidity throughout the match was actually very, very impressive and absolutely what I expected. It was a and fun Yuna, little free show match. And Yuna could have taken the pin. That's very, that's very mm -hmm. possible. So the, there is a match that didn't happen on the show that was supposed to happen, which was Hazuki versus Saya Kamatani, but because Kamatani's at the tournament, so Hazuki did get her forfeit two points on this show. Mm -hmm. uh, that one just happened to pop up and I noticed, and I'm like, oh, I'm going to mention it. <laughs> <laughs> so we move on to the opening match of the main card. It's Micah and Megan Bain taking it. The team that was announced, uh, the, it wouldn't be announced, it was announced for us because we we're talking about it later on. But uh, this is the team. Micah Me and Megan Bain are going into the Goddess of Stardom tournament together. Ooh. That's a scary ass team. But mm -hmm. Rose Gold is not going in. They're not going in as a team, which makes me go. Hmm. Why not? Because it's it's Mina and Waka. We'll, we'll talk about that on Dream Tag. We'll talk about that at the end. I'll pull up the teams and we'll talk about it. Yeah. But yeah. 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 <laughs> so, yeah, we got Mike and Mega Man versus Club Venus's Rose Gold, Mariah May, and Mina Shirakawa. Uh, Micah at the start playing with Mina's boobs. And then <laughs> Mina, like, she's just like, she gets her onto the ropes and just starts smacking her boobies and like shaking her boobies. Yeah. And then Mina yeah. comes out and does her little, her like booby song shake. <laughs> So yeah, yeah. I, I wrote down Micah manhandling Mina in more ways than one. Whoa. <laughs> wow. Micah. Yeah. She's a hands-on kind of girl. She is. I, I, you know, we don't know what she likes. I like her. But we don't know what she likes. So. <laughs> I mean, I'm just saying. She can manhandle <laughs> me like that any day. <laughs> Moving on. <laughs> Micah slams Mina, Bane and comes in with a running splash for two. Uh, then gets Mina in the corner, and she's really vicious with like the shoulder, the, like the shoulders to the midsection and the knees and the chops. Really vicious there. Um, Mina and Mike are in the ring, and they're trading hard forearms. Mina ends up drop kicking the knee, but gets sent off on the figure four, but does hit the head scissors into the Russian leg sweep. Uh, May comes in, hits the top rope drop kick. Uh, and get think it's the speed chops in the corner. Um, she puts uh, Micah up and hits the Stratus Rana, and Mina gets the drop kick, and they hit the woo sweep. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, that's their double where they do the double sweep, but in the uh, woo beforehand. Um, May gets the kick to the face of Micah, but Micah hits the snap power slam. Then Bane comes in with a running rough shot all over Mina and Mariah May. Uh, she gets them both up. 
she gets she's like she gets Mina up on her shoulders for Samoa Drop, then May runs at her and she catches her, or the other way around, I can't remember. And she like fall away slams Samoa and Drop, dual tosses them. It looked mm-hmm. really good. Um, I'm really liking Bane being so much bigger than everybody. I love it. Um, so you get you get you get some of these like Great Ocon. Uh, Yoda Suji spots like the big boy spots you get to see them mm-hmm. here in stardom finally. Um, 100%. Uh, May slides out of the slam, but uh, it was out of a slam, but gets uh, hits some slaps, but gets caught by Bane and gets and gets power slammed to hell. Uh, mm-hmm. Club Venus double team Bane. Mina gets uh, comes out of the corner, corner with this like down, like just awesome crescent kick. And then May hits a tornado DDT, then applies the standing butterfly lock. Mina gets the leg, this modified leg lock on Micah, but Bane ends up like slamming, uh, suplexing May out of the butterfly lock, standing butterfly lock, and then breaks up Mina's submission. Um, May gets the once upon a time roll up on Bane for two, but Micah hits a lariat to Mina. Then Bane and Micah hit the doomsday device. Mm-hmm. Going back old school to LOD right yes. there. Uh, and Bay hits the F5 to hell, pins Mariah May, and gets the win. Uh, Mina like gets back in there and she's like running her head into uh, Bane's boobies. It was weird. Um, like she's got her like she's like running her head into her chest. Like, yeah, to, like, she was like trying to like get all tough and I was just trying to like a motorboat. <laughs> That's what I was about to say. She's trying to motorboat her. She really was. And then Bane just hits her with this like hard forearm dropping her. It was it was, it was mm-hmm. funny. Again, really good match. Like I really enjoyed this. Yeah, yeah. This one was fun. Like the there was those a couple little comedy spots there, but overall this was a very serious and heavy hitting match. Um, I really felt um, Mariah May was doing a lot to kind of come in there and, and rescue Mina quite a bit, particularly from Bane, um, who was just absolutely just savage throughout this whole match. She was power flexing all over everybody. If she could yeet the ref, she probably would have. In fact, well, I think we've almost seen her yeet the ref. Yeet the ref. Yeet the ref. <laughs> you know, sometimes <laughs> you just, you got to yeet a ref. Yep. You too many bad calls. Yep. <laughs> yeah. This was a fun, fun match. I didn't take too many notes on this one. No, again, I, I really enjoyed it. Good back and forth with both these teams. Mm-hmm. Uh, Club Venus did get the shine, but they gave Mike and Bane a very dominant win. Well, that Club Venus shine and not look bad. 100%. Yeah. So we're going to move on. It's Utami Hayashishida, Mel's favorite, Mel's ultimate girl crush, versus Momo Watanabe. Um, Momo tosses away her bat before the match. You're thinking, oh, is she pulling a good guy here? No. Never. <laughs> she, she's show. Um, <laughs> she she's, a, she's a better version of show. Let's just say she that. She is what show could be. Yeah. she's good. She, so there's a good back and forth transition wrestling at the start. Utami unloads strikes on Momo, but uh, Momo hits the big drop kick, then chokes Utami on the rope. Momo kicking at Utami, slams her, gets a, like does like a kneeling cocky pin for one. Uh, Momo hit drop toe holds her into the ropes and then just up kicks the rope into her throat and face. Really mean. Uh, mm-hmm. Utami fights back. She hits the angle slam, then gets the elbow in the corner, and then a seated drop kick to the back for two. Uh, Momo stops at a German, unloads chest kicks, dropping Utami, then hits a corner drop kick, but gets caught up. And put up top on an, on her second attempt at the drop kick. Then Utami strikes her, dropping Momo to the floor. Like she's literally sitting up top, and Utami just like forms the shit out of her, and she goes mm-hmm. tumbling to the floor. I'm like, ow! Yeah, um, looked really good. Uh, Momo gets the bat, misses Utami, then comes back and hits her in the chest. Momo hits the dude buster on the floor, then rolls Utami back in, hits a drop kick to the back, and then the seated meteor for two. Uh, she then hits, I think it's the Peach Thunder, which is the dude buster, but in front. I think it's the Peach yes, Thunder. Yes. She hits Peach Thunder, uh, but she only gets two. Uh, Momo goes up top, but gets cut off. And Utami gets the air raid crash off the top rope, and both ladies are down. Utami blocks, kicks, but Momo hits a bridging tiger suplex for two. Utami slips out of that pump handle suplex, and she hits a power bomb. Utami with the straight right in the bridging German, but she only gets two. 
Uh, she goes for the swinging Baszler, but Mo ends up rolling her up for two. Uh, Utami catches a PK, hits a lariat, then gets the torture rack bomb for two. Utami then picks her up, gets her up, hits the hijack bomb, a move I haven't seen her hit in a long while, mm-hmm. and she gets the win. I look at the hijack bomb the same way I look at Stormbreaker for Will Ospreay. This is that yeah. move she busts out when it's like she needs that like killer shot. Absolutely. You'll see Osprey tease Stormbreaker. You see her tease hijack, but they don't mm-hmm. always, she doesn't always get in. She'll finish with us, but I love it when they bust it out. You know, that's the end. Absolutely. Absolutely. Yeah, I really, really, I obviously, I love this match. I've been very high on Momo Watanabe this year, also. Mm-hmm. I definitely think that they're going to start building her up um, a bit more in the same way that they're um, building up Utami, or sorry, um, Azumi. Um, the beginning of this, I felt, was a really fun little technical start, kind of showing off the, both the, the girls' kind of background. Um, that bat, though, we knew it was going to come back. Always comes back. Um, but, you know, just as we said, Momo is what show could be. She she uses it at the appropriate moment of the match where it makes sense, but she doesn't overuse it and she's not going freaking bug-eyed feral like show is <laughs> either she has this like almost suave asshole attitude about it and i absolutely love it because it's like what oedo tai is known for um that desperation power bomb by utami i just the more i see it the more i love it because she really does just suddenly pull it out of nowhere and ju- it just looks so good um, the chemistry between these two for this match was just utterly incredible. I, I loved this match. I loved everything they kind of flowed into. Um, yeah, that that top rope area crash was just mental. <laughs> um, I felt like Utami really, really earned this win, win in the end there. She was just hitting everything she could. And like you said, she, she finally hit move we don't really see her her do a lot of having to put Mo away almost as a last resort i love it I, and again it really sold that utami had to she hasn't busted the settle tournament and she had to bust it out here to take down Mo. it's those little mm-hmm. things that i really like to see mm-hmm. i as well mm-hmm. again absolutely tremendous match i think these two mm-hmm. had such great chemistry Yes, absolutely, yes. Also, shout out to Utami. Today is her birthday. Happy birthday, Utami. As you record this, this is her birthday. Yes, Thursday, 25. Thursday, 25 Sep- years old. Wow. Thursday, September 14th. And all she's accomplished already. It's incredible within stardom. There you go. Mm-hmm. We move on. It's Starlight wow. Kid versus Tom. Not gonna know. Tam hits a running knee right off the, right off the bell. Sending Starlight Kid to the floor, goes up to the top, but Starlight Kid gets up the apron, pulls her down, and hits a neck breaker from the top, like pulling Tam from the top onto the apron. Look rough. Uh, Starlight Kid chokes her on the ropes, hits a drop kick in the ropes, hits the cross legged fisherman buster for two. Um, Tam blocks a tiger suplex, but Starlight Kid unloads with shots, but Tam comes back with the backdrop driver. I didn't take a lot of notes for this one uh, comparatively to so all the other matches. Uh, they have each other by the wrist. They're exchanging strikes. Starlight Kid uh, gets a strike to the back of the head. Tam eventually hits the wheelbarrow suplex on Starlight Kid. Uh, she goes to the top, but Starlight Kid drop kicks her uh, on the top and hits like a roll through pin, that roll through pin thing she does, like but mm-hmm. off the top. Uh, they trade suplex attempts. Uh, Starlight Kid hits the Mishinoku driver for two. Then hits a bridging tiger suplex for two. Um, Tam stop or hits a couple bridging tiger suplexes for two. Uh, Tam stops the tiger suplex again and gets one of her own for two. Uh, Tam misses the running knee. Starlight Kid hits the knee to the back of the head, but then Tam gets her three running knees to the head, gets a two count. Starlight Kid uh, stops the violet screwdriver and gets a roll that again that roll through into the pin for two. The trade strikes. Tam hits the round husk kick, she hits the violet screwdriver, and she gets the win. Yes, yes, yes. This was a very fast-paced match, and I did not expect any less out of these two ladies. What's amazing about this is that Starlight Kid is 
um, more of that, that high speed division. So they are considered the more small girls, but Tom is also very much so that kind of small girl. And she is a world champion and she kind of showed why in this match, it was kind of like a, almost uh, anything you can do. I can do better kind of thing with Starlight Kid here. And she was almost like, one step ahead of Starlight Kids, especially at the end there when they started reversing that reversal back and forth sequence. Um, yeah, I didn't take a whole ton of notes on this either, except for they had great energy, great chemistry, and both of them were so, so, so quick. But Tam was just that little bit quicker. Yeah, again, everybody moving so quick, but just so good. But Tam, mm -hmm. I didn't see Starlight Kid pinning the world champion. No. I Not just yet. like seeing Tora pin the world champion works because it tells a certain story. Whether mm -hmm. she wins this tournament or not, she's coming for Tam for that belt. She's coming mm -hmm. after Mayu for that belt. She's coming to kill Nancy Boy. Boy. She's coming mm -hmm. for those tag titles, I guess. But like there's it's all those they just I don't think Starlight Kid's there yet to be painting not the world quite. champion in a tournament like this. Not quite. She's but working on it though. Really good match. Oh, he has. We move on. Final five star Grand Prix match on the show. Uh, Siri versus Mayo Iwatani. Really good back and forth wrestling at the start with these two. Both kind of really getting technical early, but then also using the strikes. Uh, mm -hmm. Siri gets a drop kick. Then Mayo gets an arm bar and a drop kick. Hits a PK that pisses, it pisses Siri right off. And then she, so she snapmares her. She hits a PK. Then they end up trading kicks back and forth. Uh, Siri gets a knee in the corner. Hits that DDT suplex for two. Uh, she applies the rear naked choke, but Mayu gets the ropes. Mayu fights back with the sling blade. Hits the drop kick in the ropes to send Siri to the floor. But Mayu misses the suicide dive, crashing into her own teammates. Um, Siri gets the tornado DDT on the floor. Um, they're back... Or, Maya ends up like they go back in the ring and they come back out. And this is where Mayu slams Suri into the apron. She hits her with a super kick, but both and then the ref they went in, but then they came back out. But the like Suri went in, she came back out, but the ref never stopped counting. It really confused See, me. There's always a time to yeet a ref, yes. Uh, so they both get back in at 18, Mel's favorite spot. Uh, <laughs> Uh, they trade strikes back and forth. Mayo unloads on uh, Siri. Then Siri hits the chest kicks, uh, dropping Mayu. Mayu catches. Then Mayu catches the buzzsaw kick, hits a drag, and then hits the dragon screw leg whip. Uh, Mayu attacks the knee in the ropes. Then hits the drop kick to the head in the corner. Then hits a second rope drop kick. She goes up, hits the frog splash, but can only get two. Suri stops the snapdragon, gets a Pele kick, but or like sort of Pele. Like she fell to her back and like up kicked her in the face, like upside yeah, down almost. Yeah. It, like it looked like a really like lazy Pele kick. <laughs> so I, she yeah, fell to her I would back have to agree on that one. <laughs> she just fell to her back, and just went bam, and then went bam. <laughs> like it was just yeah, yeah. It was kind of like a it was, it was a weird. Uh, it was a weird Pele kick, but uh, yeah. Mayu then kicks her Siri in the head, but Siri gets the code breaker. Uh, Siri gets her up, uh, but Mayu hits a German and then a super kick. But Siri gets her own roundhouse for two, then applies the stretch muffler. This is where she stands up and just starts spinning around in a circle yes. with Mayu. Like, like she has the that's like the leg up here, and she's just holding the leg and she's just spinning in a circle. And Mayu's just flying, it's awesome. Then mm -hmm. she like stops, reapplies the stretch muffler. It looks it looks really, really good. But then Mayu does eventually get to the ropes. I really, really like that spot. Yeah, oh. that was the best spot of that match. And this was yeah. a great, really great match, but that was the best spot. And then it follows up with probably the second best spot where Sri puts her up onto the like her feet on top rope and hits a top rope green killer just crushing her with that DDT. Yeah. Uh, she gets a two out of that. Uh, she gets Mayu up for the electric chair, but Mayu gets the poison Rana for two, then hits the head kicks. She misses the top rope moonsault. Suri gets the running knee, or the running kick, and uh, hits the German, and then hits, the, hits Okada's landslide, but she only gets two. Uh, she hits the buzzsaw kick, gets her up, and hits that, like, one-wing angel but to the side, I can't remember. Yeah, I, it's in the game, and I can't remember what. 
I don't know if I, I don't think I have Suri in the game, so I don't know what her finisher is called. I, I have her, but it's been, it's been a bit since I've played her because she's only a three star for me. Yeah, but she hits that side slam, one winged angel, and she gets the win. Again, this is now another challenger for Mayu Yutani. Yeah. Yeah. Um, Sorry, having a great tournament this year. Mayu, not so much. Mayu is having the tournament that Sori had last year as the Red Belt champion. Do we call that a cruel irony? Yeah, it's cruel irony. <laughs> yeah, and and you're absolutely right. Um, what there was a number of moments throughout this match where the strikes that came from Mayu almost seemed to incense mm -hmm. Sori, where like she would almost take offense to it. <laughs> But man, with both these ladies hitting as hard as they could, um, there was at one point the second time where they went outside um, when I believe it was when you mentioned that she hit the DDT. I really felt like Sori was very much unloading on Mayu at that point as, as much as she could. Um, the Yeah, that stupid spot with the 18. I hate that thing. Um, yeah, that stretch muffler was absolutely unreal. And as we've mentioned before, another variation of the stretch muffler. We've never really seen this move before, but suddenly it's popping up everywhere and with all these different kinds of variations to keep it fresh and interesting. It's not like a super kick, you yeah. know? <laughs> I absolutely love it. Um, well, yeah. She, well, the version that she usually does where she steps over the head is the mm. Bayako. Uh, it's her, that's her version of stretch muffler. But this, ah, one was like okay. a, this was another variation from her Bayako where she's standing up and spinning Mayu around. I yeah. really loved it. And she and went then, limp at one point. I mean, you're spinning around. You're probably getting very, very dizzy. I'm surprised Mayu was even able to escape. Yeah, I, I really did like that. It, it looks really good. Like, I really I like did. the way that it is. So and good. then her finisher is called the Suyusakai. So I do have her. I, Suyusakai. Suyusuka? Suyusakai. Interesting. Suyusakai. S-Y-U-S-E-K-A-I. I, I, I do have her in the game, so. Yay. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> I got my Julia. I'm happy. <laughs> I just need them to put a gosh darn Mina Shira Kawa and a Mariah May in this game is what I need. You know, I'm not, I'm honestly surprised that they hadn't already. She would definitely be one, as we've mentioned in the past, one of the more marketable ones to bring over and introduce, especially with, you know, Saika Mitani kind of being out of action right now. You know, it would be nice to be able to elevate some of the, the girls who are still there, yeah. working and grinding. Yeah, but again, absolutely phenomenal match on these two. I 100%. really, really, really loved it. So good. We move on to the shortest match of the night. It's a high speed title match. Most high speed title matches, even when Azumi was had the belt, was like six minutes, six seven minutes at best. These matches are never long because they're moving so quick, doing so much crazy stuff. Um, mm -hmm. I didn't take a crazy amount of notes. Um, Saki ends up laying down at the center to start. Uh, and Momokogo mounts her and starts striking her till Saki tosses her off. Uh, mm -hmm. Saki goes for the handshake, but Momo rolls her up. Uh, Momo gets some arm drags, gets a one count, does the kip up. Uh, Saki avoids, it's like she's like avoiding strikes of, Mo of Momo and trying to get away mm -hmm. moves uh, and kicks Momo and up kicks the ropes into Momo for two. Uh, Momo drop, Momo hits the drop kick, but she gets stopped on the 619. And she gets dropped on the apron, but then she drops down and like six one nine sweeps the legs out from under yeah. Saki. That looked really good. And then Very hits good. that springboard drop kick for two. Then she gets this like twisting neck breaker, almost like Tongan twist style, mm -hmm. where she had like in DDT, then spun into a neck breaker mm -hmm. for two. Um, DDT. And then she uh, Saki hits uh, series DDT style suplex. Mm -hmm. um, Momo reverses the Irish whip and, and hits a springboard cross out of the corner. They, then they trade pin attempts. Saki tries to kiss Kase. Momo ends up rolling her up for two. Then uh, gets the head kick. And then they trade more pins. And then Saki, in the end, gets the kiss Kase. And she gets the win. Mm -hmm. Again, not too much to this match. No, no. Um, I, I actually took more um, like observations out of this than um, 
notes about the moves that were kind of happening. Uh, there were multiple points, which surprised me with uh, Momo, where she was refusing Saki's handshake throughout this match the very beginning starting there was a a couple times throughout the match they tried it, it was very interesting to see that from momo but also equally interesting to see it from saki considering my next observation which is she hasn't lost a lot of those away to tie tendencies um we saw her do the little nose pick um at uh, at momo at one point that's not something that the god's eyes girls would do they're very honorable so that's kind of like a to me an away to tie thing but also she did the fukikin cigarette pose when she posed or pinned momo at one point and i was like wait a minute i know you guys were friends and everything because saki was her handler was the one holding the chain of a fukikin death whenever she came out but, um, you know, you got kicked out and you got beat up by Fook when you got kicked out. So, you know, it, it kind of was weird to see that happen again. So um, there was a several tactics, too. You know, that she, she definitely stole this one from Momo. Very underhanded tactics. Very a way to tie, you know, brings to, to, to kind of the surface of, you know, is konami correct about her assumption about cash masaki because she yes picked up a win she retained her title tonight and i believe this is her second title defense is it not i honestly don't remember i, I think this is her second title defense because I, I think she already fought oh why am i forgetting who there was a three-way wasn't there no that was how she won it there was a match in between there. I feel like this is her second defense. But anyway, so. um, it's phenomenal that she actually, you know, retained. Um, no, this but... is her four, This is her third de defense. Oh, third. Hey, there you go. She, she won mean... it in the three-way. Then she yeah. defended against Fuki. Then she defended against Koguma. And now Koguma she's defending against Momokogo. Momokogo. Mm -hmm. Yeah. She's very, very smart, very, very slick about picking up these wins. Um, but makes me think that as much as she is denying our favorite little May May, little May Sarah, I think that they're doing this kind of build with her so that when May May finally does get her opportunity against the high speed champion, that we may see uh, May Sarah take the title off of Saki. Because this, it definitely establishes her as a dominant and defending champion. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Like, I, I, we'll talk about it after the next match, but there was some movement on that. There's implications. Implications on what it could be. Yes. Oh, uh, okay. Um, we'll talk about that after because I, I, I got a confirmation here. So we'll talk about that once we're done this next match. Okay. All right. We're gonna set. We're gonna move over to the cos to the uh, Goddess of Stardom title match. It's Cosmic Angels restart in Natsupoi and Sayori Anu taking on Meizu, Meisera, and Suzu Suzuki. Meizu, I love it. I don't have a better name for them right now. <laughs> it works. It works. I mean, uh, what could you? I mean, you know, Suzu was a death match specialist and. May May looks like she escaped the circus. Death speed. <laughs> that speed sounds too much like death speed. Death speed. <laughs> death, speed death. De death, death circus. <laughs> Get Ram Kai Chow in there. They could have a really great time with that one. Uh, so it starts with Susan Sensei to the floor. Uh, and and, and Meizu double team and Natsu Poi. Uh, May puts Nat in the ropes. And Suzu hits the drive-by kick, then hits the knee to the back of the head in the ring and gets two. Uh, Natsu Boy dodges May, and uh, her and Sayori hit the double drop kick in the corner. She then tosses May by the hair and then foot chokes her, foot chokes her in the corner. Anu in, she's laying in the stomps, doing the foot choke, t uh, t foot choke also. Uh, then takes May down and gets a bridging chin lock. Uh, and Natsupoi hits the drop kick. Uh, if you know, of which is she's like bridging over, pulling her up, like very much, uh, 
Muda lock style without the leg lock, and then Nats play hitting the drop kick. Um, May and Nat have great uh, running and dodging exchange there, running like just dodging each other's kicks and flipping around. Looks really good. And then they run into each other with a double cross body. Uh, then they each do the kip up and they sh- and they exchange kicks. Uh, Suzu gets Anu in the corner. Uh, then we get her hitting this that nasty German. Gotta yes. love the nasty German. Her, that sliding, like the sliding out of the ring German out of the ropes. Looks, I love yeah. that thing. Uh, so good. Shuzu goes to the top, but Anu ends up. Uh, uh, what the fuck did I write here? <laughs> ends up ra- raining, running. Her off the top. Okay, I missed that. I'm gonna skip that spot. Uh, they <laughs> trade strikes in the center. Suzu unloads on Anu, but Anu gets the backslide. But Suzu rolls through and hits multiple head kicks. Yeah. But Anu slips out of the tequila shot. But Suzu gets the head kick. Then they trade Germans back and forth a few times, and Anu gets a bridging German for two. Suzu then hits this hard ferial ring, and both are down. The ferial ring was actually a pretty popular move in this match. Mm-hmm. Gets hit a couple more times. Uh, Suzu uh, tags out. But stops the tag to Nasty Poi. And she drop kicks Anu a few times. Or sorry, um, May stops the tag to Nasty Poi. She drops kicks Anu a few times. She applies the STF, but Anu does get to the ropes. Uh, Meizu hit dual kicks to Anu, and May gets two. Uh, May gets tripped up going like for, for the springboard by Natsu Poi and causing Angel's double kick, do like a double kick thing to May. And Anu gets the fisherman suplex for two. And then she hits the top rope drop kick. Uh, and then Suzu hits her with a top rope drop kick. Then Natsu co- Poi comes off the top with a, with a splash. And then May comes off with a splash to Natsu Poi. And they just love it. Um, very, I like I liked the variation from everybody coming in and setting like a big move, hitting their finisher. This time it's everybody's off coming off the top rope. I like that. Yeah. You can't, yeah. you kind of give it, give it a new feel. Uh, Anu hits an Insiguri <laughs> then stops a roll up by May, and Anu hits a wheelbarrow suplex for two. Uh, half and half, like code breaker combo, like where like she has her in like she has her in the half and half, and then they May hits the code breaker, and then she goes back into the half and half suplex. Yeah. Uh, looked really good uh, by May by Mezu, uh, and May May Sarah hits the hard sunset flip for two. May and Anu trade pinfalls. Cosmic Angels gets a double ferial ring on Suzu Suzuki. Then Natsupoi hits the German on May Sarah, and they hit another double ferial ring onto May Sarah, and Anu gets a final ferial ring and gets the win. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. A little disappointed. Um, I won't, I won't yeah. say that. Yeah. That was actually the first note I wrote down. Is like I already knew I was going to be unhappy with the results, but the ride was worth it. Mm-hmm. Um, yeah, there, there was that one point you mentioned where uh, May and Nat Sapoy were kind of at like trading um, shots and stuff at the beginning there. They were straight up stereoing each other's movement. It was like we were looking at copies of them, but like May was the dark haired version and Poi was the light haired version. It w- they were just shadowing each other. It was so incredible to, to see, especially because there were certain points where you saw like May would turn around and like be trying to figure out what Poi was doing so that she could keep up with her. I absolutely love seeing that because again, I do think that May is going to be the one to take that high speed title off of Cash Masaki. Um, what do I have here? the nasty plaques was just so nice to see. We haven't seen that in a hot minute from that guy. Has his match been announced for top talent yet? No, mm. or not that I've seen. Mm. My God, I, I, I hope. I hope. I'm really hoping he gets. I hope Nate gets Timothy Thatcher. Is what I'm really hoping for. Ooh, what? that would be good. Yeah, Nate and Tim would be great. Yes, those two would. Those who would. Ooh, ooh, that might be a scary match, but it would be fun considering the new setup at uh, Midway there for the shows. It could be a lot of fun. Mm-hmm. Yes. Um. What else? What else? Uh, May May after the match, she was kind of a little pissy, a little cranky, a little unhappy. I mean, understandably so. But um, Whoa. what? I, Cashman was a bitch. 
Saki Cashman being a cunt and coming out. I apologize for that word. I shouldn't have said that. But really, yeah. she was. <laughs> she was kind of being a senior next Tuesday. Uh, she's coming out making fun of Mace here because she lost. And like, ah, ha, ha, you lost. You suck. You're terrible. Then says, Rossi, you want this match? And then she Im- I, I kind of implies that she will take the match. But she never actually flat out says it. Mm-hmm. But... I remember from the match after this, they're talking about October 9th. So I went and mm-hmm. looked at the card. It's official. High speed championship. Saki Kashima. Uh, May Sarah. It's going to happen. Yes, it is. I think we're going to see a title change. I think possible. this is May May's time. Very possible. Very, very. It needs to happen. Mm-hmm. Rossi, fix it. And then, well, I, I would rather see May and Suzu win the tag titles, but that's my personal thing. I want to. See, I actually would like to see them win the uh, the Goddess of Stardom tournament and get the shot at September 29th, But we'll see. It's plausible. I mean, you got a, a death match specialist and the current NJPW Strong Women's Champion and one third of the Artists of Stardom champions. It's very possible. Mm-hmm. Very possible. I, I wouldn't mind seeing it. I really wouldn't. Uh, mm-hmm. But after the match, yeah, the Sakashima comes out and makes the implications. Uh, I mean, Sarah says she's disappointed with her timing, but she will take that belt from her. Uh, so then they, Suzu and May leave. Uh, and Azumi and Utam, Azumi and Utami Hayashishida come out. And they end up challenging Cosmic Angels for the titles. Cosmic Angels do accept. The best part about this whole thing was that uh, Tommy put Azumi up on her shoulders. And then Natsupoy climbs onto the ropes and tells Sayurianu to come hurry up and put her on her shoulders so that they, she could like face off with uh, Azumi. And then she gets her up and then she's getting position. She's like kind of just falls. And she's just like, I can't hold you up. <laughs> I mean, girl, that's because you skipped leg day. Yeah, and I just, I just, I laughed so hard. It was such a great, and so Natsupoy just walks over and like shakes Azumi's hand, who's sitting up on Itami's shoulders. Mm-hmm. Oh, I really, oh my god, would I, I would so love to see the this type. I, I love me some Natsupoy, and and see, I'm not saying Ciarion is bad, but I don't like the tag team titles on them, so I want those titles moved to Queen's Quest now. Since Suzu and May didn't get them, I want to see Azumi and. uh and do Tommy Hashida win the titles? That would be uh, that would be fun. I do find that um, with Anu, the the times I find that she has the most personality seems to be when she's in the ring with May Sarah. I don't know what it is about May Sarah's energy. Maybe it's just because she's a happy, bubbly little thing. But like, it makes Anu have more of a personality. Mm-hmm. It's very odd. The <laughs> best thing. Say. The best thing, though, when uh, Natsupoy is doing the speech and then she put the mic in front of Sarian and she's just like, yeah, okay. And it was just like so unenthusiastic. It was almost like the greatest charisma of all time because mm-hmm. she she did she went so monotone with her with her comment. It was just perf- for what mm-hmm. the, what this character has been on on here for the last while. It was absolute perfection. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. Yeah. I agree. I agree. And her then, of course, of, yeah. Poi her doing of. her bye boy. And Utami being like, what's bye boy? And then they just bailed. So good. Uh, and then, so fun. They pose and leave. <laughs> we they move pose on. And went and did their backstage commentary. Yeah, we move on. It's the wonder of stardom title. It's God's mm-hmm. Eye versus God's Eye. It's Mirai mm-hmm. versus Konami. So Konami is the evil Powerpuff Girl? Is that what she is? I am going to say that if we had to measure Kash Masaki versus Konami on their evil factor to be the dark Powerpuff Girl, it would be Konami. <laughs> she was just higher ranked in Oedo Tai. And like, let's be honest, if Kash Masaki and Konami got in a match together, yeah. Konami would wreck her shit. She would kill her. So I'm like, I'm like, <laughs> she's, she's the evil, evil Powerpuff Girl. Simple as that. Sure, yes. uh, I don't yes. know if there was an evil Powerpuff Girl, but 
I would say well, maybe maybe comparable to the princess. Remember the princess one who like bought stuff and gadgets. It's just not necessarily like the bad Batman. Yeah, that makes more sense. Yeah. So again, good wrestling to start. Konami tries a submission, but Mariah gets to the ropes pretty quickly. But Konami gets a drop kick in the ropes. Uh, they fight on the apron, but Konami gets a flying arm bar. She's like, or like Mariah gets her up onto her shoulders, but then Konami hits a flying arm, comes off with an arm bar, th- throwing her down to the floor off the apron. Look, look crazy. So um, good. And this isn't even the cra- as crazy as the show gets. Uh, no. K- Konami tosses Mariah into the post, misses a kick to the post, but then Mariah misses the lariat into the post and lariat the post. Then K- Konami slams her arm around the post. Yeah. Uh, Konami ends up like come, like going back in the ring, puts the arm on the ropes, and like stomps the arm off the top. She continues the attack to the arm of Mariah with stomps, kicks, strikes, uh, and then she even does like a kneeling cocky pin. For like one, I think um, one or two. I can't remember. I didn't write the number, but uh, every time Mariah strikes Konami with her bad arm, she's like crying out. So she's selling it well. And then mm-hmm. the arm she was, that Konami was working on was not the one that was even taped up. There was also the taped up arm of Mariah. It, it was interesting little look there. Um, mm-hmm. Mariah gets the Vader elbow out of the corner. Uh, Konami, or as I wrote, Konai. Uh, Konami gets on the back and gets the octopus, but Mariah gets the ropes, but Konami gets the PK for two, but then she, and she, and Konami applies the Miramare, uh, which was interesting to Mariah, mm-hmm. but she, but Mariah does eventually stand up and back drops her off. Uh, Konami hitting strikes to Mariah and then but Mariah's aren't effective till she just comes back just starts unloading on Konami but Konami gets the advantage again by uh, taking her down and then like hits this like harsh looking palm strike and then it's this crazy like rough back fist uh, mm-hmm. dropping Mariah then hits a running boot for two uh, Konami goes up hits a flying kick then hits the running knee to the head for two uh Mariah uh, fights back, misses a lariat, but hits hits the Samoan drop, then hits a lariat, then a backdrop, followed by the SS Columbia with Michelle for two. Love that goddamn name. It's probably the <laughs> best name move after some of say after Sabres weirdly named moves. It's it's this. Uh, Mariah hits a weird looking. She gets her in a belly to belly, and then just like goes backwards, just driving Konami's face into the mat. It looked. And then she gets wow. a two count. Oh, that looked brutal. Um, wow. The Miramari shock is stopped, and Konami gets the dragon screw arm whip and then mm-hmm. hits an up kick to the face for two. Uh, modified arm bar by Konami, but Mariah does eventually get to the ropes. But then Konami reapplies it, but Mariah gets a roll up for two. Konami lands a harsh palm strike. Uh, then uh, Mariah gets the Miramari shock for two. Uh, then Mariah hits a lariat for two. Uh, then she comes back, hits that lariat from hell, and she pins Konami to retain the Wonder of Stardom title. Holy shit. Mm-hmm. Like, wow. I, when, when I first started watching Stardom, I only got to see Konami, um, I think about two months before... Um, she had her, her temporary retirement to, to take some time off to recuperate some injuries and, and such. Um, but when she returned, I was like, oh, hot dang, Andre, we are in for a treat. Mm-hmm. I'm happy that she didn't return to Obuedo Tai. But honestly, the way she was wrestling Mirai tonight, maybe Konami hasn't quite lost her Obuedo Tai tactics either and this match coming to be because of konami's disagreement that you know kash masaki will be um a good member and, and a loyal member to god's eye um the savagery in which she was coming at mirai was just next level like she the kicks the strikes like she's just known for being such a powerful wrestler um the transitions also konami's ability to transition as you mentioned from that arm bar off the top rope there i mean holy shit mm-hmm. she's so good 
I'm, I'm very sad that she's only kind of like a part-time competitor right now, just because her wrestling is such a damn treat to watch. Um, the tape on Mirai's shoulder, very concerning to me. Um, I'm noticing it's starting to come down into more the and more and more. Yeah, it's expanded to the pectoral, and now it's starting to go almost down to the wrist as well. Um, that really, really brings some concern. That rotator cuff might be starting to to have some wear and tear on that. And as someone who's had injury to both of the rotator cuffs, that that needs some time off to to recuperate, which is not something that you know people really want to do. Relatable. Um, yeah, but the end of this match was just so good. And, and the audio, like the audio, the promo, the talking that they had after it was just so appropriate, I felt. So, yeah, I'll get it. I have, I have some of yes, it right now. Uh, Mariah said she was able to overcome Konami and defend her title. Mm -hmm. But she is looking forward to Konami's full comeback. So this is where she hands the mic over to Konami. And she goes, of course I am, dipshit. Mm -hmm. She has. She says she's coming back because Mariah said, "I want you to come back full time." And then Konami goes, "Of course I am, dipshit." Like it's very kind of way of tie of her. <laughs> uh, she says she's lost, but she's right about God's eye. Uh, she was a number two, but it's no one, but she, not anymore. And she is no one second. Uh, she won't find out what's missing with her and make the full comeback. And she goes, where's Saki? And then she goes, I, Mar I, ag I agree with Mariah's opinion, but she doesn't approve of her. God's eye is for strong fighters. And makes another comment to that. And then, but she says, practice hard and maybe you'll get better. She's not wrong. No. God's eye is made up of strong women. We got Mirai, we got Amisore, we got Suri leading the pack. You got Inaba, the Inaba sisters, both of those girls, very physically dominant, especially with their karate backgrounds. Is Inaba still the tap out champion? I have no idea. I don't watch that company. No, I don't either. I, I forgot. I forgot before. about Anaba. Tell you the truth. <laughs> naughty, naughty. These women are all strong, you know, warrior esque women. Um, so Konami is absolutely right. You know, God's eye is made up of most goddess level women. Um, you know, Saki. She's she's a very smart wrestler, but she's not. A powerful wrestler. Not she's anymore. a sneaky wrestler. She's like Rocky Romero. She's got that sneaky style about her where she can slip out of stuff very easily and also put other people in compromising situations. Very intelligent wrestler. But she's just not that power that God's Eye is used to having. Hmm. Yeah. Again, it's gonna be it, it's gonna be interesting because mm -hmm. yeah. But then Saki says Osu. That's all she said. Osu. I don't even know what that means. Just said Osu on the screen. Uh, so Suri gets the mic, and she asks Saki for another UWF rules match on October 9th. And Saki's, like, running and hiding behind Mirai. It's kind of funny. But no. then <laughs> we'll out, take that as com well. out comes Bumi-san, Mina Shirakawa. Yeah. And she wants to fight Suri in a UWF rules match. And they shake, and what's going to happen? I'm Excellent. I'm kind of excited for that. It's going to be amazing. Mina has been showing this like really vicious side of herself since becoming the full-fledged, you know, Mina Mina Fan, Mina Chan of Club Venus there. So yeah, I'm I'm excited for this as well. Um this is going to be I think an opportunity for her to really flex her power. I'm curious to see if she can uh Outlast. I know she can hang with Suri, but I'm wondering if she can outlast her. I think she'll do okay. Yeah? Of yeah. course you do. <laughs> <laughs> uh, it will be fun to see, though. That that will be interesting, because I haven't seen Amina in that styling of match before. Ha! Huh. Yeah. Okay, uh, we're gonna, uh, so, sorry, I just saw something on another page that I'm very uh -huh. interested by. Uh -huh. I'm looking at the October 9th card, and it's kind of awesome. 
we'll talk well, about let's it. talk about I'm our gonna... last match, and we can get into that. Yeah, we'll go over that quickly at the end. New Japan Strong Women's <laughs> Championship <laughs> match. It is Julia versus Arisa Sarah. Uh, really good back again. Another good back and forth to start. Like all these women have like are having good chemistry in the start of the matches. Uh, Suri gets this like where she's like STF's clover leaf looking thing. She's like kneeling on her, but she's got her tied up like a clover leaf. It was weird. Mm-hmm. Uh, she gets it early, but Sarah gets the ropes. Uh, Sarah gets an elbow in the corner. Then Julia dodges her and pulls uh, her out to the floor through the bottom rope. Uh, Julia gets the table out, goes up, but Sarah grabs her, power bombs her off the t- like pulls her off the table in the power bomb, and power bombs her onto the ring apron corner. Looked gross. Yeah. It looked nasty. Uh, Risa gets uh, Julia on the apron. Uh, so they, they fight back in the ring. They get out, then they end up on the apron. Risa gets Julia on the apron. She picks her up, but then Julia gets the octopus lock. But Risa readjusts it into the air raid crash and hits an air crash off the goddamn apron through the table on the floor. Yeah. Um, and they get met back in the ring. Um, Sarah gets a Maccabee style Boston crab, which is a high angle mm-hmm. crab. Yes. Uh, and then Sarah just like pulls her through, lifts her up, and buckle bombs her. Mm-hmm. Um, and then she has some running knees into the corner, then comes off the off the second with double knees and gets a two count. Uh, she does that like spin around the body into the air raid crash for two. Mm-hmm. Um, Sarah goes up to the top. Julia cuts her off, uh, hits the head, but gets the top rope butterfly suplex, rolls through to go for another. But Sarah tries to suplex, but Julia slips out and hits a German suplex to Sarah. Sarah gets the cradle shock. But Julia, or the Mirror Mario Shock, whatever you want to call it. Uh, but Julia hits a running kick for two. Uh, they trade strikes at center. Sarah unloads, dropping Julia. But Julia comes back with a hard shot, dropping Sarah. Then uh, she rolls Sarah up, gets her into the SDF, but Sarah does eventually get to the rope. Uh, Julia then hits the hammerlock suplex and gets a two count. Sarah stops the glory, glorious driver. And hits a, uh, a Death Valley driver. Sarah hits the uh, like an ape shit, but to the side, um, mm-hmm. and she gets a two count. Uh, then she gets a swing around into the air raid crash again, and then the double knee drop off the top. But she can only get a two count. Julia fights back, gets a rising knee strike, but Sarah then catches the running knee to the <laughs> face and tries the power bomb. But Julia like rolls through because this really awkward sunset flip. It looked mm-hmm. kind of rough, and that Sarah almost looked like she landed on her head. Um, uh, Julia hits a backdrop driver, then a straight right, uh, and then a kick, and then, then hits the knee to the face. Then a really awkward looking glorious driver. Mm-hmm. So she picks her up back up, hits the glorious driver proper, but she only gets two. Uh uh, uh Risa Sarah stops the uh the Northern Lights bomb, then hits Julia with the last ride power bomb for two. Uh she then places Julia up top, tries the array crash, but Julia gets a hard sunset flip off the top, but only gets two. Uh, Julia hits the topper of draw kick, tries a package pile driver, can't get it, so she hits a straight right to the face, hits the Chase Owens package pile driver, follows it up with the Northern Lights bomb, and she gets the win. What a main event. Mm-hmm. What a main event. Did this help you out with your, your opinion of Reese's hair? You weren't a big fan of hers in the past. I'm, I'm just saying, comparatively, out of the three people that were in prominence, she was my least favorite out of the three. She was very Sayoriano when she was with those like, three. I, she was very I liked her. Um, yeah. I liked her um, in this match. She was good. I, re- I really enjoyed her in the match. So I think mm-hmm. it's just comparatively to her teammates when, when that in that version of prominence. Mm-hmm. Like, even her and, dog kind of felt like she had a little bit more personality than Sarah when the three of them were kind of around. But Suzu was the definitely the dominant. Uh, there were times where I thought that Suzu was the actual leader mm-hmm. of the group. She just had more personality but to this one. Um, yeah, but there was that, that apron bomb that she did on Julie at the beginning was just, Ugh. that looked so, so rough. But, yeah, the air raid bomb through the table was just, 
yikes. Um, there was one thing that I didn't like that Sarah did throughout this match was her reliance on her knees. Um, it kind of became almost like a super kick party. She was kind of doing the, the double knee variations and, and similarities. It, it was a little too much for me, but I understand it is a very easy and dominant move kind of used into the, the filler of the matches there. Um, there was a, yeah, it, like I mentioned, it is a efficient, simple but efficient move for me that the, the knee is kind of the, is simple effective. That's my phrase. Um, but yeah, it, it was a little, it was getting a little repetitive um, for me. Uh, maybe she could uh, maybe. As, mm. as Steve Carino would say, super kick party. Yeah, except for it was like knees. <laughs> super knee party. Um, <clears throat> there was a one point. Sorry, sorry. Super knee party. And there you go. Um, I don't know if you picked up on this the same way I did, but um, there I've watched a few of Risa Sarah's matches and various other things, particularly some of her <laughs> death <laughs> matches, nope, which have not been my favorite. But it's what she seems to really like to do, so it's a good way to see her stuff. Um, she was pulling punches at one point, like pulling some of her strikes. And it was a little obvious to me where she wasn't quite going as hard as I knew that she could or that she would usually in this situation. But I think this was, a, it was at the time of the match. It was quite late in the match. She was probably exhausted. Julie was also exhausted. I mean, they, they beat the holy heck and crap out of each other in this match. And it couldn't have been easy for Sarah also being distracted by the fact that you know her former partner and Suzu Suzuki was in Julia's corner and not in her own. Um, there were some points where you could see the two of them kind of got a little confused or didn't know what to do next. Um, but they're but they're both so experienced and so knowledgeable they're able to pick up immediately. And, and just continue on with the match. So it didn't kind of really have any negative impact on the match overall. Um, Julia coming back at that end, at the end there, that was just so dominant. Um, I absolutely loved it because it closed off the story there showing why she is the strong women's champion there. I had a lot of fun with this one. Yeah, I really did. So we get to the post-match sheet. She goes, Risa Sarah, Risa Sarah, Risa Sarah. And she's like, Sarah, Sarah, Sarah. She's like, I beat Risa Sarah. <laughs> and then she gets, she calms down. She goes, there's something I've, I have I have been unable to say to you for a long, long time. Because these two have a history. Uh, mm -hmm. And I want to say it to you. Uh, well, you were kind to me as a rookie. I couldn't say it for a long time, but now I can finally say it. Thank you very much. Uh Sarah San, please fight with fight with me again. No, fight me again. <laughs> um, please leave Suzu Suzuki to me. And Suzu Suzuki's at ring, so I like obviously see her. You and then uh, you can rest assured. Thank you very much. Uh, I think I missed a line there, but whatever. Um, and then she's screaming, Julia. You beat me completely. Now I owe you. Well, there is okay. So where, for some reason, what she's saying here, the the translation went like they moved the subtitle down, so it was cut off. I don't oh. know why. And this it just said you beat me completely. And then there's another line that I didn't get because I couldn't even read it on the screen. <laughs> but then it goes back to normal afterwards, which made me go, the heck. He goes, <laughs> now I owe you. I won't give up on this match, on Suzu, and on me. So she's still trying to get Suzu back in prominence, obviously. Mm -hmm. um, I'll get even someplace. So Julia gets the mic back. She says, I'll be waiting for you. I'll always be waiting for you. She goes, how's it going, people of Hiroshima? Hey, 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 everyone who, who came, to, came in this crazy hot weather. How was today's show? I will continue to fight against the best in the world and give strength to all of you. And Suzu, and this is where Suzu hops up in the apron. I look forward to seeing you next week, which is the dream tag team match 
uh, at, on September 10th. What will we be talking about next in this uh, up in this upcoming week? I know we're about a week behind, but life. Well, these shows don't come out till midweek for us, so we we'll we get to them exactly. later on. Um, they shake hands, which is kind of nice because they were really hating each other earlier on in the year. Um, mm -hmm. And she goes, and thanks for being my second. Which is nice. Mm -hmm. um, you guys should look forward to the tag team of Suzu and Julia. I like to close now. And then she goes into the whole uh, Rivadarchi thing and closes out the show. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Good way to end the show. Very good way to end the show. Mm -hmm. So quickly, I'm going to uh, I'm going to do something here. Where the heck is this? Up, up, up. I'm just gonna do. We're gonna quickly. I want to go over the October 9th show because a couple of stuff was set yeah. up here, and there's some kind of stuff that's set up here that I'm kind of going, huh? Interesting. This is pretty big, considering. Lay it on me. So. Is it? There it is. I've got it. And I'm going to go back over here. I'm going to scroll down. First match on this car, the main event on October 9th. Oh. And this is before the, the the this tournament is even wrapped up. So Tor might get two shots at the apple. So Holy yeah. Hot diggity. So we're getting that. We're getting Mirai versus Momo Watanabe oh. for the Wonder title. Uh, Kai, we'll talk about this when we talk about the Dream Show. Kyrie came out and she announced this match. Uh, it's Nane, Kyrie, and Mayu versus Koguma, Hazuki, and Saeeda in uh, Kyrie's final stardom match before she heads back to the United States uh, oh. to, to join to rejoin WWE. Um, and then we get a God of Stardom. This was when was set up. I'm insanely mm -hmm. excited for this. This mm -hmm. looks absolutely tremendous. We get an artist of Stardom title match. Donna Del Mundo's Bari Bari Bombers versus Micah, Susan Suzuki. And it's, I know it says Megan Vain, but it's Megan Bain. It's Japanese thing translating. It doesn't work well. But yeah, artist starting title right there. That'll be interesting. Wow. The, yeah. Wow. <laughs> I could see the titles changing here. I really could. Uh, yeah, they'd be hard pressed to hang on to those titles. Those are three powerhouses coming at you. Holy heck! And then wow. you have Saki Kashima defending against uh, wow. May Sarah. And then finally, yeah. or then uh, with uh, not finally, but the UWF rules match: Shuri versus Mina Shirakawa. And then you have a gauntlet tag team match with Lady C and uh, Miyu Amasaki, mm -hmm. uh, Starlight mm -hmm. Kid, and Raka. Hanan and uh, Ami Saray teaming up. Interesting tag team there. And Waka Skiyama and Yuna Mizumori. Oh, more mismatch teams. Mm -hmm. It gets all the girls on the show, though. Mismatch, mismatch, mismatch. Okay, yeah, like I said, gets, Amer gets all the, the people in the back on the show. Um, that's going to be a fun one. Oh, lots of implications be, on that one. That'll be coming up in a few weeks. We will cover that. It's the next, like, Big event show that has multiple title matches, things like that on it. That's one to give ah. us. Ooh, but, the, okay. we'll, but we'll we'll be net back next week. We'll be covering the September 9th uh stardom five star show and the September 10th dream mm -hmm. tag show. We're gonna do two two separate episodes. Don't worry, ladies and gentlemen. With that dream tag show, that Hana we got Hanan teaming with uh Miss Mariah May. Which makes me excited. So, <laughs> it just looks interesting. We'll talk about yeah. it when we get to it. But yeah. Yes, we will. We will. I'm super excited to talk about that show. But I want to talk about one more show before we go. And that's Mine and Mel's show at the Edmonton Expo this upcoming this upcoming weekend. If you're in, at the Edmonton Expo on September 16th, come come to the anime room at 3 p.m. for intro to Japanese wrestling. Come say hi. Come say hello if you're if you're watching this. Come come talk to us. We love to see you. Mm -hmm. Gonna be fun. Gonna be fun. Yeah. But I think it's time to get out of this piece. You can find um, this guy, me, this guy, this me, the main guy, the the one and only. Um, you find me on the X, Mastodon, Blue Sky, and Hive at that Canada guy. TikTok, Instagram, and Threads at that Canada dude. Facebook, you can find me right up here. Andre Melball Wrestling Talk on Facebook. 
Uh, you can find me whenever I pop up on the randomness that I do over on Our Local Establishment at twitch.v slash Our Local Establishment, Instagram and TikTok at OLE Podcast, and YouTube.com slash at Our Local Establishment. You can also find me, Melball, where you might be watching us right now, over on Backbreaker Video, where all of our videos are simulcasted by our good boy, our good, our good buddy boy, the man, the myth, the legend. <laughs> <laughs> The guy, the man, right. the, hey, the man that is responsible for me being in podcasting and doing all this, uh, it's Mr. Mike the Ref. I um, want to thank him so very much for all the great support he has. So go check him out at youtube.com slash at Backbreaker Video. Uh, you can find all his live gaming content and everything he does live at twitch.tv slash Mike the Ref. And if you want replays from all his gaming content, go to youtube.com slash back at Backbreaker underscore gaming. When you find himself, you can find him. You can find uh, Mr. PJC, Mr. Rick Jules, and their freaking guest, Kayla J. Kayla J. I even did that okay. echo. I even did the echo last time. Yeah. <laughs> uh, and then uh, Melba. Yes. Where can they find you? If you're wanting to follow a Melba, you can follow her on that X thing at Collins Melba. You can follow her on everything else. Facebook, Mastodon, Blue Sky, Instagram, and TikTok at Melba Collins. You can also find me on our local establishments programming, Para Mindful, every couple of weeks. Because of my vacation this week, we didn't have time to record an episode. So Alex will be releasing an EVP on Monday at 5 p.m. Mountain Time. He's got a little surprise about what he's going to be talking about there. And I've had a look at what he's got put up already. It looks pretty darn good. So you guys want to check that out. And that's going to be done by Alex the Werewolf. You can also catch your girl on Astro Pizarro's YouTube channel where we are doing our <laughs> it's a few and far between episodes of Ladies Wrestling Showcase. <laughs> Both Astrid and myself have been busy, and of course, there is a yeah a hurricane happening in her neck of the woods. So we, you know, we got to take it easy with the electricity and internet down there. It's a little, little scurry. Anyway, what else? What else? If you're wanting to watch Stardom Wrestling, you can go to their website there, stardom-world.com. We will leave the link in the description, channel description, not our description. It is approximately 909 yen or approximately $10 Canadian. Shout out Sean Spears. But it's actually more like 715, I think it is now. 715, 730. Either way, it's a nice price to pay for for some amazing women's professional wrestling, both of now and the past. If you want to go into their little data banks back there, you might see some familiar faces from AEW, WWE. So go on and check that out. Andre, my trusted friend and colleague. Do you have anything else to say to the beautiful people? You shouldn't trust me, but <laughs> <laughs> I just want to say thank you all to you for all the great support you've given us, and I really appreciate it. So please uh, comment on the videos, like the videos, uh, subscribe to the channel, and hit that notification bell so you'll learn every time we drop a new video. Ding dong. Hello. <laughs> <laughs> and that being said, I am your mama. Over there is Andre. We will see you next time. Mwah!